Let's start programming, right? Here's this. Right, what we're gonna first do, which you should do when you're making any game, is stick a little white square in your game. Uh, I always put one of these in every single project. Mine's called True White on my personal computer. We've just called this white square. The reason that is is Unity doesn't have any kind of default uh, square. Like, you, you can't just drag a square into a computer. But if I, <sighs> there we go. I think the problem was TeamViewer was messing with stuff. Okay, so then the first thing I wanna do is, I don't know if you've ever seen a, a talk called Juice It or Lose It, but in that um, it teaches you the basic secret indie formula, right? And it's, the, it's an interesting lerp. Let me do this. Now this should be like the, the foundation of anything you work on in games. Uh, this formula is like, crazy powerful, and it's super, super simple. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a desired position in here. Right, and your desired position is just where you want the thing to go. And just for the sake of doing this easily, we're gonna set it to vector 2.0 for the time being. So it will always go to the center of the screen because the camera is in the middle. Right, and then we're gonna go fixed update. And the reason we use fixed update and not update is it's frame rate independent. So it will always take 0 0.02 seconds. It won't take more and it won't take less. So all your physics is gonna be consistent and not change depending on how good the person's computer is. So now what we do is we do transform.position plus equals desired position minus transform.position times something that we're gonna call lert factor. Okay. Uh, and just for the sake of it, we're gonna do a range of zero to one here so it appears in the inspector. And we need to make it public. Cool, now what this is gonna do is, let's get MS Paint up, a developer's best tool. Okay, so say we've got a, uh, a like a red X and another red X, right? So these are our two points. This one is our start position and this is our final position and we have like a line that goes between them. So if you look here, it's, it's taking it and adding on the desired position minus the final position times the alert factor. So that, this black line, that vector, is the inside of this bracket, and the alert factor is gonna be some value between zero and one. So for instance, I typically put it at 0 0.1. That's gonna be my default because it just feels good. You'll learn values that you like. So what happens is every single frame, so not point, well not frame, but fixed update. After one fixed update, it will be there. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 11. So it'll eventually reach that point, right? So if I go into the scene, I stick the secret indie formula on there. Uh, let's make the camera a better color because blue is really weird, I don't like it. Let's do some red. Cool. Right, and click play. And if it compiles this time, thank you, Unity. Are we gonna? I don't get why this is happening. Absolutely amazing, thank you. <sighs> Let's just keep restarting Unity over and over again and it's gonna do it eventually. Fix this, please. Have I saved my what? Yeah, I've saved my scripts, but it's just um, something's being odd. Oh, you know what it is? I need to control shift us. Okay, here. So now if I drag this around, right, it'll always return here on this alert factor. So if I put this to one, you see that it instantly returns. Like I can try and drag it around, but it'll always go back to that. If we put it to zero, it won't actually do anything at all, right? And the faster we do this, the faster it goes back to its original position. Now, that's all well and good, and it's quite nice to put everywhere in your game because it feels good, but another thing you can do is abuse that thing we were talking about earlier with the physics, and overshoot. So, 
Here is, um, do I have my PDF reader? Uh, da -da -da -da. This, this will do, okay. So here's something uh, I wrote in uni, which is um, about a damped harmonic oscillator. So say you have a mass on a spring and you pull it down, or across would be better because no gravity, and you pull it across, then it will do this, right? And it'll eventually return to zero. But in a world with zero air resistance or drag or anything, it would do this. So there's kinetic energy and potential energy, and it will go like this forever. But what happens in the Euler method, which is a method of integration, uh, a method of approximating integration, in, which is the, the, the method Unity uses to do physics, is if, if you see instead of this graph, you get one that goes infinite. So it'll start like this and then it'll go like this and get larger, right? So all these small errors, th those tiny floating point errors, add up and up and eventually become unsustainably large. So instead of getting proper values, you get crazy values things get bigger and bigger for no reason. But because of that, you can do this. So you can make your values. See, I'm trying to jump there from the value zero to the value seven, and it over jumps. So we're gonna re reproduce that now. Right, so first of all, we're gonna stick a rigid body on this. Um, we're gonna call it R, because that's easier. Right, we're gonna get it. And then instead of this, we're going to get rid of this, and we're going to go r the velocity plus equals same thing as I position times transform dot position times alert factor, right? But this time we're dividing by time, not fixed delta time, um, because oh gosh, and I've also got to cast it into vector zero. And the reason you divide by fixed delta time is. Velocity is dx by dt, if you know calculus. So th this, is, this will work, right? So if, if we now um, put this in the scene, stick a rigid body on it. We don't want any gravity. We don't want the game to control it at all. We want complete control of this. It can have mass, that's fine. Right. Now what will happen is, what should happen, is it should, it should try to get to zero, but overshoot and keep wiggling. You see this? And it will actually wiggle ad infinitum and become larger and larger. Uh, it, will, it will gain energy and the whole system will break. So what we can do to fix this is add drag. So I'm gonna add this range here of zero, one F, right? And then do public float drag. Okay, so then we do R dot velocity times equals one minus drag. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's gonna be all right. And now we stick some drag factor in here. Hello? Okay. So let's go like 1.7 or something. Then now it'll like overshoot a little and then reach the point. And you can use this for like any UI, and you don't have to do it with like rigid body velocities. You can do it with your own velocity. So say we want the scale to reach a certain point. So let's add a new uh, thing in here called desired scale, right? And we'll put this one at uh, anywhere from like zero to five, let's say. Okay. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a new fake velocity for the scale, so we'll call this a scale velocity. It's not dependent on anything, All right? And then we'll put the scale velocity uh, plus equals the desired scale, so this thing, wait, minus scale velocity times, like, we'll just use 0 0.1, because it's easier. All right, and then we'll do the scale velocity times equals 0.83, because that's the, gonna be the drag that keeps it from under or over oscillating, right? And then we're gonna go transform.scale, uh, local scale, plus equals this, uh, the 
scale velocity uh, times vector three dot one. Uh, do, 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 do. I just realized that this is nonsense. <laughs> that is not true. Sorry. The scale velocity is the desired scale minus the current scale. So we do our transform dot local scale dot x. Is that rather? No, that's fine. Okay. So the transform dot local scale is going to be plus equal to the scale velocity times vector dot one times time dot fixed dollar time. And so now we should be able to. See this. We can now drag this up. And it'll do the same thing. Like it'll get to the value and overshoot. So again, we can change the lerping time so it's much larger. And then change this to like 0 0.95. And then it'll do that. It'll grow to the value it wants. And if I if I put it at 99, it'll slightly, ever so slightly, overshoot. Um, oh see what I mean? So we can just increase the drag. And then you can just basically have that. You just balance those values, and you can get anything to sort of appear in any fashion that you want. So here's something I made earlier that I was going to do if I didn't faint and ruin all my time. Um, so here's my, here's my random scene. So all this does is you, you add a random time at the beginning. And then, yeah, everything wiggles into place. You can just apply this anywhere throughout your game, through your UI, through your your platforming. You can use it to put people in a particular position for drag. So for instance, this thing is going to like fall onto the original thing, drag to the right value, then move to the right one and drag to the right value. So it's just a simple formula, but you can apply it anywhere. And yeah, I've run out of time now, but <laughs> there you go. Uh, thank you very much uh, for nice uh, cases. Uh, now the questions. The questions, please. Uh, please raise your hand so I can see you. Be more brave. Uh, I think I have the first question. Uh, can you please tell us uh, some real cases uh, where you have used uh, this method? Uh, for example, some projects, uh, live projects in Steam maybe or in a book store. Yeah, so I basically use this absolutely everywhere for everything I make all the time. Um, a good example right now would be if I go um, look up my last jam game. Uh, so this game was made in 72 hours. Uh, the theme of the jam was uh, running out of space. So if you see, I actually using this formula right now, um, the screen is shrinking. So as the game goes on, everything gets smaller and the, and the, sh the screen slightly shrinks. So when you hurt yourself, uh, you'll see in a sec. There, the, the screen gets smaller and smaller. And if it gets too small, you die. So the, the borders of the screen are using the exact same thing. If, if you see, they don't just shrink and reach the value. They overshoot and then come back. And the way I did that was just the exact same thing. I used this formula to scale it to a particular value. But oh. everything, these things are doing the same thing, just on a sinusoidal motion. I, like literally every, absolutely everything is using these simple formula. OK, great. Thank you. <laughs> uh, another questions, please? Thank you for the great talk. Uh, uh, did you ever have tried to uh, apply this approach to Unity layout elements? 
Uh, I saw you using uh, just sprite render. It's uh, actually pretty, use, uh, pretty easy to uh, move sprite renders, but when you're using a UI layout element like uh, lists uh, when uh, Unity control layout, it's uh, a bit complicated to move them around. Wait, so you mean in, in a canvas renderer? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, in a like everything, like this works with every system you could possibly want. So like it will work in a canvas renderer, it'll work with 3D objects, 2D objects, literally anything if you if you want motion. Uh, I, I'd really advise like learning how to do this because a lot of people depend on like a utility pack, like alert pack, but it won't do exactly what you want it to do. It won't move in like, it. you can maybe set it to move from here to here in X seconds or something, but you don't have complete control over it. So if you kind of figure out how this works, then you can you can apply it anywhere. Yeah, for sure. Uh, but uh, I mean, in UI elements like list, when you apply, for example, vertical uh, layout element or horizontal layout element, when uh, this controller actually uh, set rec transform position, when you uh, don't control rec transform position and layout element control it. Uh, okay. So you mean you have you have like a list? And all of this, you do you want the individual elements to move separately? Yep, yep. Um, then, uh, for example, a buttons animation when I have uh, ten buttons and I want them uh, like uh, start the easing on uh, screen and it boom 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 animation. But uh, you, there is no simple approach when you can do it in uh, layout elements. You need to UI layouts. Okay, you can, so you can, like, you can add a script to every single individual button and have like a a, a listener that will re read when it's received, like a button click, and then and then do that. Like, there's there's no there's no reason you can't use this like literally anywhere. If you if you prefer to use like layout renderers for for large strings of UI, then fine. But like, this is more of like a general principle that you can apply for. So you have a logo on your title screen and you want your logo to pulse. Uh, say you have, you're jamming together a game really quick and you don't want to spend days working on a UI. You just want to quickly put something together. Or say, uh, especially, it's really useful for physics. So the reason I, I used uh, velocity and not um, position is because when, when you use a rigid body, things will collide with each other and it works. But if you if you move something via its transform, then things will the physics will break. So collisions will stop working. Things will stop bumping into each other, and your whole game will break if if your game relies on physics. So you should always try and do stuff with a velocity rather than a position. So hypothetically, yeah, it's quite easy to get something to go where you want it to go. But if you're doing if if you prefer to use velocities, and especially don't use Unity has a built-in function called move position. And if you've got two objects and they're both trying to move position to the same point, they'll kind of go crazy and then just go like that. Um, whereas if, if you use this system and you're like kind of slurping, then you're going to go like this and then they're kind of going to slide over each other in like a natural way rather than just being like... So th there's, there's like lots of applications for this that I haven't made abundantly clear. But <laughs> it's... It's something that if you add it to your arsenal, it's really simple to learn, and it's not diff like it's it's only a couple lines of code, but it just makes everything look and feel a lot better.